This is episode nine of Living Your Best Life with Deanna. I am so excited to introduce our guest today. We have the beautiful Nadine Sierra with us. Hi, Nadine. <laughs> Hi! We've known we've known each other a long time, so you know. I mean we kind of started this whole thing together. <laughs> yes, we did. Yeah. It's it's kind of amazing. It's amazing really. and it's so beautiful and inspiring to see what you're doing and how well you're doing it. Not only are you a gorgeous singer, but you are a gorgeous person. So you. you live your life very you well. Too. I think you inspire a lot of us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I try. I think it's the most, um, yeah, giving thing one can do, whether right. you're an artist or, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, whatever it is that you can do to influence others positively with what you're passionate about, what you love. Um, I think that's like, I don't know, that's just the most rewarding thing, I think, that one can I think so too. Upon. There have been several times that I can look back on very specifically where you've offered me some really good advice or you've really inspired me. I remember one time when I, it was when I was changing management and another was when I was yeah. really struggling with holding on to my love for yes. this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> what motivates you and what sustains you? I guess it always came from this one thought or this one goal that I I've always thank God, I've always been able to keep consistent in my mm -hmm. life since I was a little girl. Because when I was a little girl, I had wanted to become a performer, a singer, and then eventually an opera singer. And the number one thing I always wanted was to just simply have a career doing what I love. Mm. And I have wonderful parents, but my parents are also <laughs> stage parents, and they wanted something, it's true, they wanted something kind of different, which, yeah, <laughs> you've met my parents. Um, they are lovely. <laughs> no, <laughs> they are. <laughs> But, you know, they wanted something a little bit different in a sense, you know, of course they wanted me to be successful, they wanted me to become famous, they wanted me to make lots of money. And that's fine and dandy, but I, I always felt like, even when I was a kid, and I still feel like it now, that that, for me, was very superficial. Mm. And I never wanted to be an opera singer or a performer just to gratify my own ego or status. Yeah. You know, it was it was never for that purpose. It was always for more of a spiritual and loving purpose that I just simply had for, for music itself. Mm -hmm. And on one side, that, I mean, just having that thought alone has given me a lot of strength um, to keep pursuing this career because in a way I I'm gonna be really honest. Yeah. I Guess I don't really care <laughs> Should I ever lose? Let's say the notoriety or lose the oh Nadine is at the top or whatever. Yeah for me. I, I don't even know what that is. I <sighs> I just don't really put so much importance on it for myself mm -hmm. because that's not really where I'm trying to go. I'm not trying to be better than anybody. I'm only trying to be the best version I can be of myself. Yeah. Uh, we as artists, I think artists, I think we're conditioned, not think, I know mm -hmm. that we are conditioned from when we're very young, especially if we're training at a very young mm -hmm. age. We're conditioned to not only learn from that training and progress, but we're also trained how to please people. Yes. We're always in this mentality of having to please and be pleasers. And of course, as an entertainer, 
there is a portion of that. Yeah. But it is not solely that. And the reality is, going back to being a little bit more realistic or practical, mm -hmm. is that you are never going to please everyone who listens or watches you. You're just never, never going to do it. Never. And so <clears throat> trying to achieve that, to me, is nonsensical. Yeah. And yeah, and I guess, I guess that idea of, well, it's not, it's not just, it's not really about not caring. Mm -hmm. It's just not putting so many expectations on yourself yes. that you beat yourself afterwards when you haven't met those expectations. Because yes. many times you won't. Many times we no. won't because we just, we want too much from ourselves for other people. Totally. So right now we are in a unique season of life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how this has been for you, the, the revelations that you're having. Um, and also, you know, what was it like leading up to this time of pause? You know, I've seen you've been very, very busy. Can you share a little bit about that? Yes, I was very busy. And I, I will admit to you and, you know, the people watching, I... I honestly felt like I was too busy. Like I needed a break. Mm. I needed a break. Yeah. Um, I had even been to an ENT in Berlin a few times because my cords wanted a break. Mm. They were telling me like, this is, you need to slow down now, yeah. you know? And it's not so much because, oh, you have to have a perfect technique and nothing's ever going to happen to you. It's not necessarily about that. If you use and use and use and use muscles and fine tissue over and yeah. over and over again, no matter how great your technique is, you are going to see the consequences yeah. of that eventually. Yeah. And yeah, and for me, my cords were tired. They were tired. Um, I had to cancel three performances that I had in Berlin. Mm -hmm. It was false staff mm -hmm. because I just, and I told my manager, I said, I just need to like relax for yeah. a little bit. I'm, I'm not a robot. I'm only human. Yeah. So when this, when this, um, quarantine started, I was of course really shocked yeah. and really, and, and in many ways kind of terrified, but I was also slightly relieved yeah. because I felt like, oh my God, this means like I can actually rest my voice. Yeah. And I, and I did. And I rested my voice for, I would say over a month. No singing. I just let it, no singing Good because I didn't, yeah. And I don't know. I, I think maybe this, this whole situation, I'm sure it's taught people a lot of different things. Yeah. But I, for one, you, you talked about like sort of a revelation. Definitely my revelation was, you know what? In the future, I'm going to cut down in my schedule mm. because I, ha I have to. Yeah. Um, if I want, you know, if yeah. I want to keep singing for a while, that's something I have to do. It's yeah. something we all singers have to really think yes. about um, and make it a priority. Rest should be a priority it should be yeah um and it's hard for yeah. some of us you know because so there's, hard there's so Very. much work that yeah so much sacrifice so much effort that building this career requires um and like anything in life you know balance 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 is cool. yeah it's always it's always important and it's it's kind of key to the way to the way our world works, yes. you know, to the way the environment works, yes. to the way our bodies work, to the way our eating works, our exercise, totally. our sleep. It's, it's, yeah, balance is, is such an important thing mm -hmm. in just human life, yes. in life in general. Yes. And so, yeah, to ignore the other side, which is, as you said, resting, taking care, self-care, mm -hmm. putting importance on that. You can still hustle. You yes. can still have that. But I guess the question is, what do you want 
the outcome to be within that hustle. Mm -hmm. If you want a long, let's say if you want to run the marathon, mm -hmm. you really do have to prioritize having a balance in your life. Yes. Because if you are only hustling, you're never gonna make it. Wow. You'll, you'll go halfway and you will you have will to quit. You will, you will, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, what would you say are some ways that of self-care for you? Well, you know very well, because I know you're very active, <laughs> yes. that, <laughs> that exercise yes. is super important. Nadine and I were workout um, buddies. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was tough. But yeah, like, yeah, but just, I guess, I guess for me, it's, yeah, it's finding hobbies yeah. that, yeah, I just love that have to do, I guess, with self-care. Because I guess if you're mm -hmm. doing things that you love, you mm -hmm. are caring for yourself because you're catering yes. to the things that, at the end, make you happy. Yes. Um, yeah, so I guess exercising, eating healthily. Yes. Um, Mm -hmm. I love I love to like figure out different rest. I know you do too, so it's like yes. it's nice to. Well, I see your fancy <laughs> pancakes on the ground. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's I don't know, just like inventing healthy recipes yes. for you know things that otherwise would maybe be less healthy. Um, totally, you get creative, and you know just. But I guess it's just such simple things like. You know, um, Nico, ha so my fiance, Nico, he's Argentinian and he has a really lovely uh, tradition in their family, which is drinking mate, Ooh, even drinking yes. mate, like in the afternoon. It's, it's just, there's just something so lovely about that. And there's a and ritual around it. it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and making time for it. Mm -hmm. It just, yeah, I guess just the combination of those things it can create that atmosphere of, yeah. of feeling better or feeling happier when you do lead a life that, you know, the life in which we lead, which is very chaotic, mm -hmm. um, always moving about, mm -hmm. really never feeling settled. And again, just some, somehow searching and creating a balance in one's life. Yes, um, I love that. Well, yeah. and speaking of happiness, you introduced yes. a new family member into your life, did you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I did. And I now have a new kitten. Um, I love cats. I love animals. Yes. And my, my fiancé and my mother-in-law, or my future mother-in-law, mm -hmm. gifted me this little kitten. And his name is KB, which stands for Kitten Baby. <laughs> precious thing and I know that you have Fritz yes and there yes and there really is something to be said about having a fur baby in one's life totally. it really can make a difference oh well Nadine <laughs> in closing do you have anything that you would like to say or leave us with nothing is ever fully lost things always come back mm -hmm. and that's why, in a sense, we have this this um, this animal, um, mythological animal that exists of like the phoenix, yes. always coming from the ashes, yes. coming from the ashes and being reborn, and it it happens all the time, and it always tends to happen. It seems with the most beautiful and positive things that mm -hmm. um, exist in our in our world, yeah. and I do think that that absolutely applies to this art form um, specifically. And I, I think if we just keep carrying that love and desire to continue on, it, sh it shall happen. And um, yeah, just knowing that, that the future will be hopeful. Yes. We just have to, have to put our hope into it. I love that. That's what I'd say.